Here she is. The Yamaha KX5. Um, yes. Bought this instrument off eBay. I think I bought it for like 150 quid. Um, it's used, obviously. They don't make these anymore. This is like about... It's about 30 odd years old, so uh, they don't make this anymore. So, um, Yamaha KX5, three octaves first of all. Keys are really small, so it means you can stretch a larger span, um, a larger span with one hand usually, with piano. The most people can stretch is a ninth or a tenth, with this you can really get some really far octaves if you've got big hands or far intervals should I say. Um, so I'm just going to run through the basic controls. So you have portamento here. Now bearing in mind um, all these, all this does is send data. It just sends MIDI data to a sound module or whatever you assign each, basically each uh, parameter to do. Um, there are no sounds built in, so you have to have it hooked up to something which produces sound. So at the moment, I've got this hooked up via MIDI to my interface, which is coming through, and I'm using a program called FL Studio, and I have a patch, a VST called um, Purity, and I've made sounds to make it sound like the Got Match recording. <laughs> Doesn't sound exactly like it, but it's good enough for me because I like it. So yes, Yamaha KX5, um, three octaves, small keys. Um, you've got a section for your portamento. Um, you've got a section for your um, monophonic and polyphonic. So which means that um, mono means one note at a time, poly means more than one note at a time. Basically, um, you have a transpose function. So that means if you want to go up a, you, if it's an N at the moment, which means neutral. So that means whatever you play, it comes out at that octave, specific octave that you play. At. If you put octave down, it plays an octave lower. If you put an octave up, it plays an octave higher than, than um, neutral. So yes, um, you have the bank and voice section. So um, again, this only really applies if you're using a, a general MIDI sound interface or sound module. So you have four banks. Each bank has eight voices to which you can assign whatever you want to assign them. So you put press bank one and you press that, it will be the first voice. If you press three and this, it will be three so it'll be number 22, so voice 22. But this only goes up to 32 voices. So, um, yes, that's that. Um, we have, if I move this across a bit. Oh, shit. So, here, we've got a sustain. So if I hold this here. Sustain, um, which is very cool because if you want sustained sounds, if you listen to the end of Got a Match, um, Chick is playing this some chord, I can't remember what chord it is, and he's holding the sustain button, which is pretty cool. So you've got a sustain um, button there, which acts like a sustain pedal of a piano. This is cool, yeah. So this is a pitch ribbon. Um, so, obviously I'm holding it, but if I play a note, which is really cool, um, in Got A Match you have, so that bit you got, so you can get, Very cool. Um, yeah, pitch ribbon. You have modulation. So uh, again, all these parameters are kind of interchangeable. So you could, um, you can whatever you assign it to, it can do whatever you you, you say it 
tell it to do. But this is a modulation, so I've got this going through uh, LFO, a low frequency oscillator and a filter, so you get that sound. But um, whilst holding that, so yeah, you've got that, which is pretty cool. So yeah, and also you've got your volume again. This is this doesn't apply to my actual program because it doesn't have a um, a function set to it. So, but yeah, this is it. Um, this is the baby. Uh, I have at the sides. I have um, I've installed strap locks. Um, so what they are is these. If you can see that. Um, so you clip it onto the side, and then you can pull this kind of. Um, you pinch this out, as you can see, and it will release it from the actual button at the side. That means that this will this won't come off. So if I'm playing on stage, this will not go anywhere. Um, no matter how hard, I'll just just give you an example. If I move this to the side here, that is that is that is rock solid. They ain't going nowhere. Um, these are cheap. That you can buy this for like a tenner. Um, but they're really useful when you need them if you're really rocking out on stage. So yeah. That is my KX5. Um, let's get on to Got a Match, which people want to see. It's quite a little tricky little thing because of the speed, but again, anything is hard if you don't know it and it's at speed, so you just slow it down really. Um, it took me a while to learn, but I got it. So the first um, phrase goes like this. <laughs> That's the first phrase, so you have a D minor chord in second inversion. And then you have an A major chord in root position. All you're doing is moving that D down to the C sharp. So you get this. Pretty straightforward. Then you're playing the D minor Again. Alright, so you've got Yeah. Pretty straightforward. And once you get to that A, you're gonna do GF. So Skill basically. Then you play G, F, E, E flat. So you get this. And you land on the D. So you get. So again, you have the A minor second position, second inversion. Then you have G minor in second inversion, and then you're just moving that G down to it becomes D major. So you have same thing again. So. So, what 
bit of the head. There we go. Um, that's the first bit. Then the next bit goes. It's good to point out the, the chords of this bit. So you have um, E minor seven to A seven, F minor seven, B flat dominant seven, E flat major seven. Note, but I hammer on to become 
the D and G because when you when you when you play the maximum pitch bend, so when you put it on high, it goes up a tone. So so I pull this across. You can see what I'm doing here. Or you can slide. So all together, you have... So from the very top... So that's the first bit. Now we're going to go into the solid lines, which are even harder. <coughs> so yeah. So we've just done the head. And the solid lines come in after the drum solo-ish. There's an interplay between um, the drums and Chick, or Dave Record and Chick, and then you've got a soli line. Um, I'll play it slow so you can see it first, and then I'll break it down. So, the soli line. So, what's going on there? <laughs> so it will be... So you're surrounding the A first. A, B flat, A flat, B flat, A. And once you've got that A, you go down the D minor arpeggio. so small it's hard it takes a lot of practice so so all together the next bit E flat F F sharp E flat D. Then C sharp, E flat D. Then go down that D minor arpeggio, G minor arpeggio. E flat, F, F sharp, E flat D. E flat D, B flat D, G, sorry. And at the end you play D and F. 
DNC. What's going on today? DNC. Then come down that D dominant seventh arpeggio. There. C 
sharp major chord or D flat major chord and then a D sus4 chord so from the very top So there's that bit. Um, once you've done that, speed it up obviously once you get comfortable. So go really slowly. So um, if I do that again. So that's quite a, that's quite a tricky bit. That um, what you need to do is just do it really slowly and make sure that you've got it under your fingers slowly, and then you speed it up. I mean, at the in the actual tune, it's about four times as fast. So <laughs> and it took you quite a while to learn that. So yeah, we'll go on to the next little solly line, and then we'll be over. So the next little solly line is this. So, um, yes. So A, B flat, A, A flat, A. Yeah, so A, B flat, A, A flat, A, D, E, F, G. F, G at the end. So from the very start, it will be now. 
it goes to a D, but I'm going to use, use the pitch bend so I can go up to that D. So I'm using the C going up to that D. So down to C. top it will be of this section it broken down so let's do each section from the first bit of the solid line to the second bit That's it guys, hope you enjoyed the review slash lesson. Leave a comment below, like, rate, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you for the next lesson.